Hi, everyone. Hello. I hope everyone's having a good 2015, and it's time for a podcast, because I love my little podcast, and I love you. I did one podcast last month, and I know at the time I said I was thinking about if there was going to be any kind of regular schedule, and ha ha! This is me, so uh, we have not gotten another podcast until right now, which is, I think, a little over a month later. So I'm still not sure about if there's going to be any kind of schedule or what with this. Um, I guess I'm just going to record these when I can and talk about whatever comes to mind. So, what comes to mind right now? Well, what I've been doing, spending a lot of my, you know, video game time doing, is I've been setting up for an LP of D4, which I, I mentioned a couple times. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, I think that this is probably the thing that I'm doing that people would be more interested in than anything else. So let's talk about that. Why not? Let's talk about what it, what's involved in doing a, a full, full blown let's play like this. I mean, I don't really want to say call it full blown because that makes it sound like a bad thing, but no, it's a good thing. We have some full blown D4 that we're going to be talking about. Now, D4, I'll avoid giving any kind of spoilers for this, so don't worry about that. At least I think I will. But who can say? D4 is... I thought it was going to be kind of difficult to LP it. I was not quite sure about it when I first started playing it. So, I didn't stream it out or anything when I first started playing it. I wanted to try to, you know, have the video content for this to be... A, a proper, more traditional Let's Play, in which we go over everything and try everything out, and see all of the conversations and all of the hidden stuff. And there's quite a bit of hidden stuff in D4. D4 is, well, I mean, it's known as being a Kinect game. And, I have to be honest, I can't get the Kinect to work. I bought an Xbox One with a Kinect, because I had to know... I had to I had to try it for myself. I've heard so many stories about the Kinect when it came out for the 360. I never tried it myself. I saw so many giant bomb videos of them trying to get the Kinect to work. The Xbox One Kinect is supposed to be better. It's supposed to be a lot more accurate than the 360 one. And if that's true, I can't even imagine what it would have been like to use the 360 Kinect. Because the Xbox One Kinect barely works for me. I assume it has to do with my setup. I'm sure I don't have anywhere uh, enough as enough space as what the Kinect needs. Certainly not what they suggest. So maybe I'll give that another try at some point, try to figure it out. But as it is, I've been uh, playing D4 with the controller, and I find that it works fine. Some people say that with um, without the Kinect, you're losing a lot. But honestly, with the controller... All D4 turns out to be is a point-and-click adventure. That's pretty much how the game plays. You use a cursor on the screen to move your character around. You can interact with items and people to talk with them, or to pick them up, or to push them. You have the ability to push a lot of things in the game, and there's not much of a reason to do it. You can just push people and things. Sometimes it does something, but not always. But uh, it's basically a point-and-click adventure game. And uh, I feel that it would, be, it would be a good thing if this game could get released on the PC, because uh, the PC is a platform that has a long history with point-and-click adventure games. I, don't, I think the audience on the PC would not be confused by how to play a game like this, even if there is no Kinect. But anyway, that's basically how the game plays. And as I started playing it, I was kind of wondering how I was going to let's play this game, because you can tell that it's the follow-up to Deadly Premonition, but at the same time, it's going for a very different thing. And what I mean is, much like with Deadly Premonition, D4 emphasizes a lot of exploration. But it's different in the sense that Deadly Premonition puts you in this large area this large town that you could drive around in, get lost in, explore nooks and crannies and find people to talk to and find, you know, bones to pick up and you don't know what you're going to do with those. 
and just like find a, a variety of things. And maybe you stay up after midnight and, oh, there are giant dogs around now. There was a lot of exploration in that way. D4 also has a lot of exploration, but it has more to do with being in a very small area. And that small area is packed with stuff. Stu little, just little things for you to look at or read or pick up. And they may not even be important. Most of them aren't. But they're there. And you can miss a lot of that. You will miss a lot of that your first time through. For example, um, one of the highlights of D4 are the lunch scenes. Much like Deadly Premonition, D4 ha has scenes where your main character sits down to have some lunch. Uh, and there are six of those scenes in total in D4 Season 1. Most people, when they go through the game the first time, they'll see two of them. So that's an example of you go back, you look around, you try to do things at certain times, and you'll find things that you didn't encounter before. All of the locations in D4 are very small. There's your apartment, which is your home base. There's an airplane that most of the game takes place on. And that's kind of it. So it's weird thinking about how this entire game takes place in these very small areas. But there's so much to look at and so much to interact with in these small areas that it can take you a little while to get through it. Uh, not sure how long the Let's Play is going to be if we're going to do a 100% of it. And we will, but I'm not sure how long that will take. Usually on your first time through, you'll probably get through it in mm, maybe like three hours, something like that. It's very short, because the thing about D4 is that it is not a complete game. And I think people need to know that if they're going to play it. They need to know that before they, before they buy it and, you know, dive in. Because D4 Season 1 consists of a prologue, it consists of Episode 1, and Episode 2. And it's not like The Walking Dead Season 1, in which you have an entire game, and then Season 2 is the next game. This is... Season 1 is only part of the game. And it's released like this because, I guess, Swery had to release something right away, uh in order to keep, in order to try to make some money back so he could continue making D4. Maybe we'll try to get it, get a bit more into that, into the Let's Play. But, uh, yeah, Swery has had some problems with getting this game made. Uh, I think mostly having to do with the, with the changing priorities at Microsoft concerning, uh, this weird Japanese game and, uh, the Kinect in general. Maybe we'll talk more about that in the Let's Play, but, Keep in mind that this is not a complete story. This is not a complete game. Uh, this is Season 1, which consists of the first three parts of this story. And uh, it's not been said how many episodes there are going to be in total. Swery has said that it's going to depend on how many he can make. He knows how the story is going to end, but how much might be between the beginning and the end is going to depend on what kind of funding he can get. So it might be longer, it might be shorter. Either way, hopefully we get the ending. I, I don't know if that's even guaranteed. But as I was going through D4, I was trying to work out how am I going to let's play this uh, and see everything and try to keep it interesting because a lot of it is just looking at stuff. And if you ever watch someone doing a blind run of the game on YouTube, you might think it seems kind of dull because it's a lot of, like, walking around this apartment and looking at things, and you might wonder when is the player actually going to get to something. So it can, maybe can be a little bit difficult to try to keep that entertaining. But at the same time, I want to do everything. You know, I want to 100% it. That's the idea. So, I've been doing a lot of planning and trying to work out how I'm going to show everything in the most efficient pathway through the game possible, which is what I did with Deadly Premonition. Uh, I remember there were a number of people saying that in Deadly Premonition, it seemed like I was wasting a lot of time doing, you know, one thing or another, and 
it's kind of the funny thing is that I really wasn't wasting any time in that LP. But rather, I was trying to do everything as fast as possible in order to show off everything and trying to take the most efficient path possible. And if there were po- if there were parts where it just wasn't possible to take an efficient path to get from one place to another, at those points I would probably do something like insert a movie review. Like the first movie review of Deadly Premonition was... Uh, Deadly Spawn, I think it was. And I put that in because there was a part where I was going to have to drive across the entire town because the path that I had worked out, I just couldn't figure out a more efficient way of doing it. I couldn't work out a better, faster way of doing this aside from just driving from one end of the town to the other. So I thought, maybe I'll just like put this, like make you this movie review where I'm talking about a movie uh, York talks about, and I'll put this in here. And uh, I thought it came out okay. With D4, it's more like I'm trying to work out how do I look at everything, how do I see everything, but keep things moving along, keep things snappy, uh, so people don't get bored. Um, Because it is very much a slow-paced game where you're exploring, you're looking at stuff, and you're just seeing what the descriptions of things are. So basically, what I've been doing is I've been playing the game a whole bunch of times, over and over, working out where all of the hidden secret items are, working out an exact pathway to take throughout the three episodes, uh, a pathway that will you know, lead me to, p- to pick up everything, all of the hidden stuff, so we can see all the stuff, and see all the hidden locations. Uh, so I've worked that out, I worked out that plan, uh, and I got that done. Another, th- another thing I had to do was play the game over and over so I would get a whole lot of money so I could buy all of the clothes. Something else about D4, there are a lot of clothes. There are so many clothes. You remember in Deadly Premonition, there were like, um, I think maybe eight suits. It was something like that. In D4, there's not suits. Rather, there are pieces of clothing. Like, you can buy a shirt, you can buy a tie, you can buy pants, you can buy shoes, you can buy facial hair. Yeah, you don't grow facial hair, you put facial hair on. So, if you, if you were, um, if you felt sorry in Dudley Premonition that York was not able to grow out his beard to the full magnificent length that you wanted, D4 has you covered. There was, um... DLC facial hair, which I kind of love the idea of. Um, all the DLC, by the way, for D4 was free, which is nice. I mean, it was all cosmetic stuff. It was all like clothes and the, the aforementioned facial hair pack. The facial hair that you could download was pretty great, and we'll be taking a look at those in the LP. Um, but there are so many clothes, and there's so much of it to buy. I had to play it so many times, so I saved up enough money to actually buy all of the clothes, and all of the food items, and all of the music tracks that you can buy, so you can play on the record player in your apartment. It takes a lot of money to actually buy all that stuff, but I eventually did. What I've been doing right now is I've been recording B-roll for the LP. Uh... Since we want to show off everything, of course, I've been recording failure states. Like, what happens if you choose uh, conversation options that lead to um, less than optimal responses? There are a few parts like that. I mean, there are not branching paths or anything. Rather, there are some conversations where you, where you, uh, you can choose what your response is going to be. And uh, there's one answer that will be the best answer and get the the most relevant dialogue. And other choices where you won't get such relevant dialogue. It's a very small thing, but at the same time I do want to show it all, so we'll look at that. There um, There are QTE sequences in the game that are referred to as stunt sequences, stunt scenes. And uh, they're easy to pass. D4 is not a challenging game. It's meant to be a very movie-like experience. Or rather, I should say, a TV series. That'll become more apparent when we see the game, because uh, it'll become clear how it's supposed to be like a TV show. It has like a 
an opening and commercial bumpers. Not actual commercials, but a bumper. Um, so, there are some QTE sequences, um, which, like I said, are not difficult to pass, but they are kind of difficult to uh, get a perfect on, because it rates how you do in these sequences. And you can do pretty poorly and still pass, but if you want 100%, if you want to get it perfect, which, I mean, of course we do, it takes a lot of practice. Uh, there are still a couple of them that I've almost gotten perfect on, but not quite, so I still have to do a bit, a bit more practicing on those. But I also recorded the failure states of uh, losing the stunt scenes. There are other things like um, in your apartment, you can pick up fortune cookies and get your fortune. You know, a callback to Deadly Premonition where um, we could drink some coffee... And for some reason, we got a fortune when we did that. D4, going a bit more traditional, it's just straight-up fortune cookies. You pick up a fortune cookie and get your fortune. So I've also been recording um, just scenes of, of, of taking fortune cookies while wearing, you know, different clothes. Because there are so many clothes, I keep having to change the clothes so we can see a good amount of them throughout the LP. I finished recording the B-roll uh, last night. So I'm glad that's done, because once I actually start recording the playthrough, I won't actually be able to go back and record any alternate footage until I'm done with the whole thing. Because the way the game works is it auto-saves, so you start, and then like you get to points where it will auto-save, and then when you leave the game and you know start up again, it will continue on from that point. I can't just, you know, lock in a save, though, and say, okay, I'm going to start this over again, and then go back to my save later on. No, there's only one save, and if I start the game over again, it'll get overwritten. So I have to make sure that everything is done before I actually start recording this playthrough, because once I start it, I cannot actually go back and record any alternate footage until the entire playthrough is done. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I mean, it's a short game, but if I'm doing everything and seeing every conversation and doing every extra case, then it'll take a little while to get through the whole thing. Not sure how long. And I mentioned extra cases. D4, okay, you remember Deadly Premonition, had a whole bunch of side quests. It had 50. And the idea was that, you know, there would be so many, so you would have things that you would come across as you're playing through the game, as you're exploring the town. And maybe you wouldn't get all of them. Maybe you wouldn't even get half of them. But the idea is that, you know, different people would come across different side quests. And if you were a real fanatic, you might try to get everything. I don't know who would do that. So D4 has what are called extra cases. A similar thing, but not quite the same, because extra cases don't always require you to do anything. Extra cases might just be an additional cutscene, like uh, I mentioned the lunch scenes. Each one of those lunch scenes is an extra case, and when you do a lunch scene, you get what's called, um, well, there are what are called scrapbook entries which are just text talking about something. It might be directly related to the story, like previous murder cases, something like that. It might be something not apparently related to the story, like a uh, hockey trivia? There's a bunch of hockey trivia in D4. I don't know if Swery is a fan of hockey, but uh, there's a bunch of it, mostly because the main character used to play hockey in his youth. So there's a lot of that. Um, and you get a bunch of this stuff when you're doing extra cases. Some of the extra cases are, are more, um, are more like Deadly Premonition side quests, where you, uh, you have to leave and find an item and come back to the person you were talking to, and then that will complete the case. So extra cases can take the form of, of different things. They're not all side quests. I mean, they're all optional. But they're not all really side quests. Some of them are just additional optional conversations that you can get. So, D4 has a lot of that. Um, there's like... 
36 extra cases, I think. I'd have to check that. But it's it's 30-something. Some of them are very short. Some of them take longer. Some of them are more complex than others. There's one that you can't actually complete until you've played through the game once, because to complete it, you need to get an item that a character is going to give you later in the game. And when you play the game the next time, you carry your items from the previous playthrough over. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I didn't expect something like that. Something like that also makes the game kind of harder to present. Because when I start a new game, I start off with all of the clothes, all of the items, all of the money... You know, all that stuff is already in my inventory, so I have to remember how I picked up everything and where I picked up all of the things. Because I want to show all of the things. So anyway, there are a lot of extra cases in D4. There's some alternate footage, some failure states we can see. But mostly, uh, yeah, so... There's going to be fortune cookies that we can see, and it's kind of difficult for me to remember how many there are because they come in no particular order, and they're, you know, they're randomized, and they don't tell you how many there are. I know I've seen them all because there's an achievement for seeing them all, but I don't know how many there are, so I'm just going to have to guess. Um, and there's probably some more uh, DLC that's going to come out. The last DLC was actually pretty recent. I think it was just last month. It was a pack of uh, rock band themed clothes. You know, rock band by Harmonix. You can you, there's a DLC pack where you can wear clothes with rock band theming. There's a bunch of that, like a bunch of crossover indie game stuff in D4, where you can wear clothes branded with those indie games. There's a bit of that, like Sword and Sorcery, uh, Super Brothers, like games like that. There's uh, there's a few clothes like it. Anyway, D4 is a very quirky game, which you wouldn't have expected coming from Swery. It's about a murder mystery, it's about a detective, and I think probably the main thing that people will talk about when you see D4 is how the main character stacks up to York. That's a tough comparison, really. I mean, that is a lot to live up to. Deadly Premonition, the main focus, the main appeal, was the main character. It was, you know, Francis York Morgan. Uh, D Force character, uh, David Young, is also, I think, a likable character. He is quirky in his own way. I mean, not as much as York. He's a bit more grounded. Um, but I think that he has his own charm. And I think that he is a likable character. I do think that Swery succeeded in creating a likable main character that is very different from York. Because, you know, it's a very difficult follow-up act that Swery has had to do. He's had to make a game that is clearly by the maker of Deadly Premonition, with all of the baggage that that entails. It entails making a very likable game with likable characters, a likable story. But you don't want it to be too similar to the last game. You know, you don't want the character that you're controlling to uh, be an eccentric FBI agent who really likes movies and talks to someone who doesn't seem to be there. I mean, he could have swear he could have done that, but that would have been kind of kind of bad to just try to do that again. So it's kind of a difficult thing what Swery had to do, to try to deliberately make likable characters again, but they can't be like how they were last time. They have to be different, but they have to be likable in the same way, but they have to be different. And I think he did a pretty good job with D4. I think the characters are pretty memorable. I think they are pretty likable, and I think that uh, they do carry this game. The uh, murder mystery is also interesting. I should mention, you know, I don't. This is not a spoiler. Th this is something that you should expect to know going into the LP. The murder mystery is not resolved. Um, I think it's important to know that. This is the prologue, episode one and episode two of a murder mystery game that is going to be who knows how many episodes long. Assuming we get more episodes, and I hope we do. So, there is a lot that is unresolved in D4. Let's get that out of the way. You're not going to know who the murderer is by the end of this. And, uh, 
I think that the story is interesting. I think that Swery has done a good job with building up this new world with its with its own particular rules. A world that might tie into Deadly Premonition. I mean, there are connections. I don't think it would ever actually be the case that it would be... I don't think there would ever be any, like, solid, concrete connections to Deadly Premonition because while Axis Games did make the game, um, the rights to it are held by a different company. D4 is held by Microsoft, so I kind of doubt that there would ever be a concrete connection between D4 and Deadly Premonition. But there are, you know, there's a few things in D4 that you see and you wonder, is that supposed to be, like, what they were talking about in Deadly Premonition? Is that what this is? I don't think it'll ever answer that, but I think that Swery has kind of made a game that indirectly, unofficially connects to Deadly Premonition, and if you want, you can believe they do. I kind of doubt there's going to be anything in the game that will contradict it, but I think legally there could not be anything that would confirm it either. That's kind of how it comes off to me. And I think you won't need to ask me what I'm talking about when I say that there are things that seem to be referencing Deadly Premonition when we, uh, when we play through D4. It'll be pretty obvious. The main focus of the plot has a lot to do with something that we came across in Deadly Premonition. And it kind of seems like the same thing, but any, we'll get to it when we, pl- when we actually play the game. So yeah, a lot of preparation being done to figure out how to LP this game. I worked out the exact path I want to take to, you know, do this all the most efficiently I can, but at the same time, getting all the items, seeing all the cutscenes, seeing, you know, just doing everything we can do, getting all the extra cases done, seeing all the facial hair, and so forth, and seeing all the failure states, all that stuff. Um... And, you know, honestly, I have to say that I felt kind of weird doing this because D4 is a very heavily story-based game. And, you know, over the years, people have talked about whether or not doing Let's Plays is good or bad for the game and how if you do a Let's Play of a game, are you taking away sales of that game since after people watch your Let's Play, people don't actually need to buy the game? And I kind of feel weird about that when I'm doing this Let's Play of D4, because I'm thinking, if someone were to watch this LP, would they have any reason to buy this game? Or have I taken any reason to do that away? I don't know. I mean, I'm doing the Let's Play the same way I did the Deadly Premonition LP, which is to say comprehensive, 100%, all that. But I do have to wonder if I am potentially taking away sales of D4 because of it. It probably doesn't matter. I mean, I doubt the views this would get would be enough to actually make any kind of noticeable dent either way, probably. So maybe I shouldn't worry about it, but I kind of do think about it. With Deadly Premonition, you know, I deliberately, when I did that game, when I LP'd the game, I usually did not LP games that were that new. You know, the games I LP'd before then were like Shadow Man, Sword of the Berserk, Ill Bleed, all very old games. Deadly Premonition was the newest game I had LP'd because it came out the same year. It came out in March of 2010, and I started doing the LP in November of 2010. The reason I felt okay doing that was because the game was out of print, I think. it The game had come and went, and it was done, you know? There were no new copies of it being made. The, you know, it was over. It eventually came back, you know, they released the director's cut on the PS3, and then they released it on the PC, on Steam. So, I mean, great, the game is available digitally now, um, so... It doesn't matter if that there's a, you know, it's not in print anymore. You can always get it. So, great, that's wonderful. The original version is also available digitally on the Xbox 360. Um, 
in the uh, Games on Demand section if you ever want to play the original version of it, the uh, the non-director's cut version. Because actually, I, I still do like the original version more than the director's cut. But anyway, with D4, there is no print run. It's a digital game. It's not an old game. It came out in September. There's no such thing as a print run, so, you know, anyone who comes across it on the store could buy it. Is that a problem? Doing an LP that might kind of take away any reason to buy the game? I don't know. But again, maybe it's not really something worth thinking about. Eh, I don't know. But uh, that's just sort of something, uh, just sort of feeling that I had as I've been working on this. In any case, the LP is coming. I hope, and I probably should not set a date for this, but I hope I'm able to post the first video Friday of next week. I forget what the date is, but I'm hoping I can do that because right now, since I'm done recording the B-roll, it means I can start recording the actual episodes and then over the weekend and early next week, I can edit them together using the, you know, the B-roll footage, things like for, uh, fortune cookies and failure states, edit those in. I can uh, make like a little intro for the first part where I'm talking about Swery and the development of D4. Um, and I think that that should be done so I can f uh, post the first video and the LP thread on, on that Friday. I hope so. I sh There's really no reason why I shouldn't be able to do it by then. But I'm always, I always feel awkward about setting dates because I am bad at beating them. So anyway, that's what I hope for. And then probably it'll be like, uh, I'll probably post a part every week on Friday is what I'm thinking about. That probably sounds like a, a doable schedule, something I think I could actually meet. I'm also thinking about um, episode length. Probably the episode length will be like 30 minutes. It, that sounds like a good length, right? Especially since D4 is meant to be like an interactive TV show. That seems all right. You know, before Deadly Premonition, the um, the length of my videos were much shorter. Like, Shadow Man videos were like 10 minutes. When I did Ill Bleed, I think I was going for around like 20 minute videos. When I got to Deadly Premonition, it got a lot longer. Like, I was posting hour-long videos. And the reason for that was because it was a very slow-paced game, and there was a lot to do. And I wanted to feel like every episode, I wanted it to feel like something got done. You know, I didn't want there to be the sensation that you just watched this video and no progress was being made. Even if we didn't do anything in the main storyline, I still wanted, you know, progress to be made in the side quests, in collecting these weapons, in collecting these cards, in talking to people. The episodes where we actually did, like, main storyline stuff, those were easier. Those tended to be shorter because, you know, there was a more concrete feeling of progress. As opposed to an hour-long episode where we just drove around doing various side quests. Um, but I wanted there to be a feeling of progress, which is also why I, add, um, I had added text to Deadly Premonition whenever we completed a side quest or uh, found a trading card. I added text at the top saying how many we found and how many uh, were yet to go. Because there were so many, I felt that it was needed to have some kind of way of counting that so you could feel like, you know, that, okay, this, we made progress, this is how many we have, we're, you know, we're like halfway through it, or we're almost done with it. I started doing that with uh, Shadow Man, since in that game the objective is to collect the Dark Souls, of which there are 120. And so, since there are so many, I felt that it would be good to uh, have like a subtitle that appeared on the screen that said, we, you know, this is how many we have now, this is how many we still need to get. Um... So, I, I guess the only reason I... I don't even know why I brought that up. I guess the reason I brought that up was because I feel like it's important for a Let's Play to have a sense of progress, a sense of, you know, something happened. We did something. This was not a waste of time. It was not a waste of time to watch this video for an hour where we just kind of messed around driving a car into horses. We did something. 
We accomplished something moving the boxes around in the back room of this convenience store. It was worthwhile. D4 does not have that kind of downtime. It is snappier than that. When you know what to do. Um, but I'll probably also have, like, you know, text appearing on the screen to to keep our progress, to mark, you know, how much we've collected and what we need to see. I'll figure something out for that. But anyway, yeah, so, like I said, I'll probably be doing shorter episodes for this, probably 30-minute episodes, which is shorter than generally how Deadly Premonition episodes went. And I'll do that um, just so because, like I said, it's meant to be the length of a TV show. And since the game's so short, I don't think we really need to have, like, hour-long episodes, because that would just make the LP shorter than it already is going to be. So, it's probably okay to have, like, 30-minute episodes. I'll probably figure that out when I'm actually recording the things, try to work out where would be a good place to stop and start, um, and then work that out as I'm doing it. But that's what I'm thinking. And then I'll be posting that, like I said, hopefully next Friday. And I hope I can keep to a, a weekly schedule. I really want to. But as you as you know, if you watch my videos, you probably know I'm pretty bad at a schedule. I mean, we have this podcast right here. Originally, I was thinking maybe I would be doing a weekly podcast. And that didn't happen. No, it did not. Again, I'm not even sure what kind of schedule might be necessary, or if one is even necessary for this podcast. But I do feel that uh, a schedule is needed for the Let's Play. I really didn't like how long it took me to finish Mode. I mean, I liked doing Mode, I liked how the LP turned out, but I really did not mean for it to, to take the hiatuses that it did. Didn't mean for it to take two years after starting... It was kind of an entire three years since I announced it in Spy Fiction, I think. I really didn't intend that, and I hope that I can speed things up. So that's what I'm hoping to do with D4. And uh, since D4 is, like I said, it's pretty short. If you know what to do, it's pretty easy to get everything. So shouldn't be any big obstacles in recording this. I have uh, the the uh, capture equipment needed to record at 1080p, so I'll be doing that. I'm not sure what the resolution of the game actually is. I know it's higher than 720p, but I don't know what is actually being rendered. If it's actually 1080p, or is it 900p, or what's going on with that. But it does look sharper than 10. Sorry, than 720p. So yeah, I have the equipment to record at 1080p. I'll be posting it like that, so... I mean, that, that'll that be good. Um, I will... Again, I'm not really sure how many weeks it's going to take. But then after that's over... After that's over, then we're going to go... Into... Um, into Enemy Zero. Which is another Let's Play... That I've been promising to do for a very, very long time. To complete out... Kenji Ino's Lara Trilogy. It's actually the middle game, not the third game. But I already did the first and the third game, even though they're called D&D 2, and this is called Enemy Zero. It is the second game. So we will be doing that. You know, that one actually kind of has similarities to D4 in that it's going to be very short, and it's going to be very linear. So once I get started on that one, it probably won't take long either. Though I do have some games to um, supplement it. I did find some of the 3DO games that Warp made. So we'll be taking a look at that as well during the Enemy Zero LP. As well as um, the final game that Kenji Ino ever made, You, Me, and the Cubes. Which is a uh, downloadable game on the Wii. So that's something else we'll be taking a look at with the Enemy Zero LP. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm ho- I'm glad that, you know, finally going to do that. But honestly, D4 has to come first. D4 is the game that we really want. I really want to play it. Really want to do a Let's Play of it. I think you want to see it. And it's also a game that a lot of you can't really play because you don't have an Xbox One. 
You know, that's really the thing that's a shame with D4. I mentioned if it was released on the PC, I think it would do pretty well. Because a point-and-click adventure is nothing strange to the PC. Um, the Kinect might add something. It might add a layer of interactivity. I wouldn't know, because my I can't seem to get mine working very well. But I don't think it's necessary at all. Um, and I think that that's really how that game should go. I think that Microsoft should publish it on, on the PC, so everyone gets to play it. As it is, it's on the Xbox One, which a lot of people don't want to get. Um, you know, a lot of people looked at that system and felt that, all right, I can count that out. There's nothing on there I'm going to need to get. So I don't have to worry about spending a few hundred dollars on that system. You know, the system I have right now, maybe it's a PS4, maybe it's a PC. You know, this is going to serve me in this generation. This is going to have the games I want. I don't have to spend that kind of money on an Xbox. And then, you know, D4 comes out, and you're interested in D4, but are you really going to... Are you really going to spend hundreds of dollars on an Xbox just for that game? I mean, I did, but you're probably not as dumb as me, because I'm real dumb. I bought I bought an Xbox One for D4, and I, I haven't really played anything else on it, honestly. <laughs> multi-platform games coming out on it. I mean, I have a PC, and it's always better on that. Um, any exclusives on it that I'm interested in? No, not really. I mean, I gave Project Spark a try, which is like a free thing on the Xbox One. It's like a, a thing where like you can make your own game. I guess it's kind of maybe Microsoft's answer to Little Big Planet. I gave that a try. Um... The reason I gave that a try is because someone made a, a sort of a recreation of PT in Project Spark called RT. It's kind of funny. I mean, it doesn't look like PT because it looks like the kind kind of graphics that um that Project Spark has. But it's kind of funny that someone actually did that, and it, I guess it kind of shows the flexibility of Project Spark. Maybe I'll do like a demo friend of it someday. Um, it's kind of interesting to look at. But I think that might be the only other thing I've played <laughs> on the Xbox One. There is no, you know, there's no Xbox Live indie games on it. Um, any of the indie games that are actually coming out, I've also seen on the PC. I know there's going to be some exclusive stuff, but I, I don't think I've seen any of that yet. So, it's, it's the Xbox One has been a D4 machine for me. And, you know, while I'm at it, the PS4 has also been a PT machine for me. I haven't played anything else on it. Oh, I've wasted so much money, haven't I? Well, it'll be worth it. I'm sure it'll be worth it as this console generation goes on. There will be exclusive games on these systems that I want to play. There have to be. It's statistically impossible that there will not be. I have to believe that. Um... But, uh, yeah, so anyway, like I said, with D4, it's a shame because the platform is the problem. That's why a lot of people are not going to be able to play D4 unless it gets a PC release. But then on the other hand, the re the fact that it's a Kinect game on the Xbox One was probably the only reason this game got funding. Microsoft was looking for someone, you know, to you know make con good Kinect games for the Xbox One. And swear he did that. I will definitely say he did that. I mean, I'm assuming that because I haven't been able to use the Kinect. Without the Kinect, it's pretty good. Um, but of course, Microsoft had a change in focus. They don't really care about the Kinect anymore because the Kinect turned out to be uh, poison. Poison is probably a good term for what the Kinect turned out to be. Um, it seems like kind of a shame there's some neat ideas there, but, uh, yeah, I think Microsoft was just, I think they really were not paying attention to the limitations of the Kinect when they determined, when they decided that there would be no peripherals for it, there would be, like, no controller you would be holding that the Kinect would detect. Rather, the Kinect would only ever detect your, 
you know, bare hands, your body. Um, even though apparently third parties asked Microsoft if they could make like a peripheral that they could use to, en- you know, to, to enhance the Kinect's accuracy, apparently part of the mandate was that that was not to be done. With Kinect, you are the controller. And it didn't work out so well. And uh, it cost Microsoft a lot of mind share and a lot of market share, and they, they backed off from that thing, didn't they? And I guess D4 has paid the price. Hopefully, though, it's not such a big price that there will not be any more episodes. I really hope there will be. And I was wondering about whether or not I should wait until D4 is completed before I actually do an LP of it. But being that we don't actually know if that's going to happen, maybe I should just LP Season 1 right now. And then when Season 2 comes out, you know... We'll get to that. We'll get to it at that time, but since we don't know what the future will bring, hey, let's do this now. Because I think you want to see it, you know. I think a lot of people are curious about what this really is, and what's in the game. And even if you've seen, you know, people do blind runs of it on YouTube, there's still a bunch of it that you that you probably haven't seen. So I think it's a good time for an LP of D4, and that's what we're doing. And I, I'm very excited to get to it. I'm happy that I'm going to get to a full, proper Let's Play again. I like the other stuff I do. I really didn't mean to put this off so long. Again, I'm sorry about that, but man. I, I can't even explain why I put that off as long as I did. It's amazing how time flies. How days can stack up into weeks, can stack up into months, can stack up into years. And how you think... Oh, I'm kind of tired tonight. Maybe it's not such a bad thing if I don't work on the mode LP tonight. How that kind of just kind of stretches on and on and on and on. And uh, then you realize, oh man, two years have gone by. What am I doing? So, again, sorry about that. <laughs> but hopefully I'll be more uh, on the ball with D4. Because I really, again, I really want to do it. So, that's, I guess, that kind of explains all of the preparation that I've been doing uh, to play D4, to LP D4, as uh, we'll get a Deadly Premonition style, 100% LP, in the coming weeks of Swery's new murder mystery. And if a new D, if a new season of D4 comes out, and I really hope it does, you know, we'll eventually get to that, but like I said, the lineup for right now is D4, and then it'll be it'll be followed up with Enemy Zero. So as far as the uh, these proper LPs go, that's what you can expect coming up. Um, still do have some other things that I want to get to as well. Um, some other serieses that uh, I kind of left off, like the horrors of Xplig. I mean, there's a bunch of horror games that I still want to do on that. I wrote a list up months ago, of all of the games on there that seemed like a horror game. And I really want to continue on with that. Um, Because we have a bunch to do. And I love me some X-Plig. Speaking of which, so far, there have only been two X-Pligs released in January. So, not much going on. Not enough to do a video of, anyway. Um, So, we won't be getting an X-Plig video in this coming week because there just isn't material there to to work with. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if anything else comes out. But uh, who knows? Maybe we uh, have finally gotten to the final slow trickle. I keep saying that X-Plig's about to die, but maybe it actually is. I can't tell yet. Shouldn't say that prematurely. But uh, it might be. I also have to catch up with the Ouya. It's been a little while since I've looked at what's been coming out on that, but you know, the Ouya, we might need to rely on it a bit more if Xplig's going away. Um, might need to keep up with what's being freed. So, I really should take another look back at that. Another series that I want to get back to is Retro Friend, as there's a bunch more Atari 2600 games I want to do, or at least a few more. And then probably move on to the NES. Um, once I get to that point, I'm probably going to have to think about how I want to do that. Because with um, 
Atari 2600 games, it's entirely possible to do the whole game in one video. With NES games, it really isn't, with most of them anyway. So I have to think about, if I get to that point, do I want a retro friend that's multiple parts to show the whole game? Or do I want to edit it down so the whole thing fits into one video? Eh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. But uh, that is another thing I want to get to as I'm doing these other things. Um, what else could there be to talk about on the table? Uh, not much else as far as D4 goes. I think I've covered pretty much any th everything that I wanted to mention. Um, just in terms of the mindset that I have as I'm trying to do this LP. And the, um, the prep work that has gone into doing the LP, which there's a lot. Honestly, when I actually get to the recording and commentary part, that's probably going to be the fastest part. I'm probably going to go through that real fast. Um, because of all this preparation that I've been doing to, to make this happen. I hope that's how it goes anyway. And, uh, then you'll get to see D4, and you'll get to decide for yourself if this is a worthy follow-up to Deadly Premonition. I think it is, but you might feel differently. You also, and you know, it also kind of answers the question of what would Deadly Premonition have been if they did not uh, have combat forced into it. Because we know that Swery originally did not want to have combat in Deadly Premonition, and that the publisher uh, required them to put it in. Because, you know, it's a video game, and it's, you know, it's supposed to have that. If it doesn't have combat, then it's not a video game, now is it? You can kind of see this attitude when people talk about Deadly Premonition and they say that the gameplay is kind of awkward. And generally when they talk about gameplay, they're talking about the combat. Like, the combat is the gameplay. That's the mindset. The real gameplay in Deadly Premonition is the exploration, is talking to people, completing side quests, stuff like that. The fishing, you know? That's the actual gameplay. But it's interesting, the mindset that people have, that the combat has to be considered to be the, the gameplay, and everything else is just something on top of that. In any case, D4 does not have combat. It has some QTE segments, but not actual combat. So if you were curious to see what a sweary game with no combat looks like, well, you're going to see it. You're going to get to see what that looks like. What, uh... This looks like when um, Swery does not have to jam in a uh, Resident Evil 4-style shooting system. So y you can look forward to that. Uh, so again, I guess that's pretty much all there is to talk about as far as D4, as far as what's going on in the future. Um, and also, I guess there's one more thing to mention. Um, news about the, uh, the stream. Um, you know, I'm going to have to change... Well, not how the stream works, but uh, but how it's archived, I guess. So, uh, how to talk about this? I usually have to, I usually like to talk about the fun stuff and the stuff that makes us all happy, but I guess you know I have to get into more serious stuff now. Um, you know the the stream format is a format that I've been trying for what's it been like a year and a half or two years, something like that. It's been a while, maybe even longer. And, you know, I posted that to YouTube, and there's always been, there's always been, um, a dislike of those videos, because it's not just, you know, a game, there's like a chat in it, and I'm talking to the chat. The stream is meant to be a social aspect, that's an important part of it. And, uh, I understand people wanting to cut the chat out, but that kind of gets rid of the point of the stream in the first place. I understand that there's, you get less out of it when you're watching the archived version, it's really not meant to be watched after the fact. It's meant to be uh, attended live and interacted with. And that's generally how, you know, that's really what I intended it to be. And people who come there live, they seem to have a good time. People who watch it afterwards, maybe not so much. Um, so, it was a format that I've tried. Um, and I tried to spice it up as best I could. Uh, you know, I tried playing interesting games like the CDI games, uh, and I tried being the most interesting host that I could. Um, but week after week, the only thing anyone ever talks about is complaining about the chat. 
And if I'm at the point where, you know, there's CDI FMV amazingness happening on the screen, if I'm at that point and still the only thing anyone's interested in is talking about the chat, I guess I have to come to the conclusion that I failed. Um, that I was wrong and this was not a good format for the YouTube channel. And I, I understand that. Um, but I thought I would give it a try and thought, uh, that I would post the stream videos to YouTube as a means to archive them. Um, but they just seem to make people angry. So I'm still going to do the streams because I enjoy doing them, but I'm not going to post them to YouTube anymore. I'm not sure what I'll do. Uh, as it is, I've been using Hitbox consistently for months now. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, I've been archived... And, well, the archived versions are also available on Hitbox. Um, I guess for right now, at least, that'll be where you can see them. If you're interested in watching the archived version, you can go to my Hitbox channel and uh, watch it there after the stream. Um, I don't know if there will be somewhere else, another local pla another place that'll upload them for uh, local archiving, as opposed to Hitbox, since, yeah, you don't know if Hitbox is going to be around forever. Maybe it won't. I hope it will, because it's been a good service so far. Much better than Twitch. Um, but for right now, I guess that's where... I guess the Hitbox recordings will be the archived versions. Um, and if you want to watch the stream live, you know, I highly recommend coming to it live, because I think I have a good time. And I think everyone there is having a good time, too. Uh, but I can see now that it was the wrong content for the YouTube channel. So uh, I'm not going to be posting them there anymore. Uh, I'll try to figure out what would be good content to replace it with. Since I know that a lot of the videos I post to YouTube are indeed the streams. And if I'm not posting them there anymore, that's like maybe at least half of the videos I post, you know, that's gone, right? Uh, I'm not, it, it seems like I'm not posting a whole lot if I'm not going to post the streams. So I'll try to figure out something that would make for better YouTube channel content than uh, than the streams have been. Maybe if, uh, like say, maybe as we're playing CDI games, you know, if we come across a more interesting one, maybe I'll do like a, uh, a retro friend video of the CDI game. And it would be like a separate recording from the stream. Um, so we would play it on the stream, you know, and if it seemed interesting, okay, then I'll record a, a local video of this for YouTube. You know, maybe that's a way of going about it. Like, for example, um, you know, Thunder in Paradise. We all love Thunder in Paradise. I eventually want to get a CDI mouse so I can try to beat the whole, beat that game. Um, cause that should make it a lot easier. So, an ex as an example of that, maybe I would do that on the stream. And then, you know, after that, I would do a, a separate recording of going through the game and upload that as a retro friend. Because the CDI counts as retro, it certainly does. Um, so I'm thinking that's kind of the format it's going to take. I think that's probably how this is going to go. So if you want to watch the stream live, you probably know where it is. You can see the link to it on, on my website, supergreatfriend.moe. Uh, if you want to watch the archive, it's going to be in the same place, the same hitbox. Um, and I'll try to think up new types of uh, content, new types of videos that I could do as a replacement for the stream on the YouTube channel. And again, uh, Let's Play D4 should be starting next week. So I think that's everything there is for me to mention about the goings-on in the recordings of the video games. I think that's everything. That seems like everything. So, this has been part episode two of a podcast. And uh, I'm recording this on Thursday, January the 15th. I expect I'll be uploading it later tonight, so that should be the case. Um, I hope everyone is looking forward to D4, because I can't wait to get that started. I hope everyone had a good hour uh, listening to a podcast. And uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed I Love My Little Girl and Boy. There's still another 3DS <laughs> exclusive about loving something 
That's still to come up. Hopefully that's next week. So we should finish out the I Love My trilogy um, next week, I think. So I hope everyone has a good day, have a good night, and we'll do another podcast whenever we do one, whenever I have the, uh, the chance to sit down and start talking into a microphone for an hour and have something to talk about. I'll do it. Don't think I won't. Uh, I just don't really know when that's going to be. So hopefully I get that figured out at some point. Have a good, have a good day, have a good night. And I hope everyone has a lot of fun with D4 as it comes up, hopefully next week. I'll see you next time for another a podcast, whenever that might be. See you then. <laughs>